Hello friends and welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, August 18th and it is a somewhat cool, cloudy, rainy kind of day here in southeastern Pennsylvania and that's just fine. Because uh, I got a lot of stuff to do indoors today so I'm a happy guy. Great to be back. I missed you last week. I was, uh, of course, at the, uh, the Columbus Pipe Show, the North American Society of Pipe Collectors 2024 show. It was an incredible time, and I'm going to tell you all about that, and that's, we're going to probably, this is probably going to be a long one, because I got, I got a lot to, a lot to go over, uh, a lot of experiences to share and all that, but it was a fantastic time, and as I've said before, if you haven't been to a pipe show and you got a chance to go to a pipe show, Get yourself to a pipe show, for goodness sakes. The Richmond show is coming up mid-September, and I am planning to go. Um, so uh, check that out if you're anywhere near uh, Richmond. Maybe uh, maybe you can get there and kind of experience some of the stuff that I'm going to tell you about uh, today. Although, I've never been to the Richmond show, so it may be completely different. I doubt it is. I will say this, I went to the, the first pipe show I ever went to was the New York show, which was an odd little show, and it was a great time, uh, but it was a much smaller group, and it felt different. It felt a little bit more like you had to be in the club to be a part of that. Uh, Columbus is much bigger, and because of that, it's much more open, and I don't mean this in any way to be negative about the New York show. It was a great show. I wish they would bring it back. I don't know if it's in any way related to the Albany show now. I'm getting off on a tangent here. Go to a pipe show. That's the bottom line. <laughs> You'll enjoy them. All right. So I arrived on uh, Thursday night, actually. So I decided, well, what actually happened was my car died. And I'll tell you more about that at the end if you're interested. So my wife had to come back from Pittsburgh because she's there caring for her dad. And then drive me back to Pittsburgh with her and then I took her car. The reason being is I need a car here. She's got her car there, but she's also got her mom's car so she can, you know, she can get around uh, without the car. So I then take her car and drive to Columbus on Thursday afternoon. Uh, got in around four o'clock, I think. Uh, had some dinner at the bar and had an early night because it had been a long couple of days. But I believe, I believe I ran into David Morgan, St. David, uh, that afternoon. Time is difficult, but it, this is basically what happened. I ran into David. He said, hey, when I have breakfast in the morning, sure thing. So we, we wound up meeting uh, on Friday morning for breakfast. And we went to the hotel breakfast where we had a voucher for free breakfast as part of the package deal that we got. And... Uh, let me put it this way. Spending time with David is always a pleasure, and I, 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 I love that guy. He's a fantastic human being and just a really friendly, funny, happy guy. Um, breakfast was awful. <laughs> I mean, it, was, it was like they, they, they tried to find ways to make the food bad. Anyway, I didn't go back there again, but we, we, I enjoyed being with David. Uh, they did have coffee, which was nice until they ran out. And then David went off to do his thing, and I wound up going to visit uh, Astronaut Grove Park in in the area. Um, I, I'd never heard about this before. It just kind of popped up on when I was looking for the hotel on, on maps, and I thought, well, let's go see that. It's a park that's a um, sort of a, what's the word I'm looking for, tribute to the Challenger astronauts uh, that you know tragically died. I remember that day very, very clearly. I know exactly where it was. I watched it live. I was actually watching the shuttle take off. Uh, it was at college. I was actually in, in a classroom. Well, I was outside of a classroom waiting for a class. And the uh, TV, there was a hallway TV that was showing, like, it would show, like, news channels and stuff. And it had the, the live launch. And, oh, that's something to watch. And then it was terrible. Anyway, this park is small, but it's nice. It has plaques for each of the astronauts. It had some interesting sculpture in it. I took some pictures. You can see them on Instagram. And while I was there, I, I decided to have a pipe, even though you're not supposed to. And a man asked if he could sit with me and struck up a conversation. His name was Alfarezo. 
and Alfarezo was uh, born in Guatemala. And we talked for a good half an hour to 45 minutes. Uh, he was a fascinating gentleman. Not a pipe smoker, but didn't seem to mind that I was. And we talked about life in Guatemala when he was a child, working on his father's sugarcane plantation. Uh, the fact that when he was in fifth grade, he read about the Great Lakes and thought that's something he, had, he would never see. And just last year, him and his entire family, down to his grandchildren, took a trip to see the Great Lakes. And he was telling me about different sites he saw there. And, you know, I'm originally from Philadelphia. He really liked Philadelphia. And we talked about that. We talked about Baltimore and Boston and, and Vermont. And it, it was it was a wonderful, wonderful time. So... He had to get back to his uh, family, uh, so he, he took off, and I finished up my pipe and then drove back to the hotel. Oh, no, I, I went <laughs> I went to get some, some supplies. I wanted to get some bottled water and stuff like that, and then I wanted to find lunch. And uh, <laughs> I, I'll get the pipe stuff soon, but this is funny. So I, I look for food in the GPS, and this thing shows up. It, it's alphabetical, and, and it's... Uh, Twisted tacos or something like that. Something tacos that began with a T. And I thought, well, that that's fine. I like Mexican food. It said street tacos. I thought that'll be fun. Uh, so I pressed it, and you know, GPS is. And I got the pipe going in the car, and I'm driving. A nice day, and I'm just uh, enjoying myself. And you know, turn left, turn right. You have arrived, and I. It's a parking lot, and I'm, I just assume I'm at. You know, and I park and everything, and I look up, and it's uh, it's Twin Peaks. They're open. I don't know what Twin Peaks is. I'm I'm thinking of the uh, you know the TV show, David Lynch, uh, which doesn't make any sense for a restaurant, but that's the only thought that I was having, you know. And there's like mountains, so I don't know. So I decided to go to Twin Peaks for lunch. Twin Peaks is essentially Columbus's answer to the Hooters chain, if you are familiar with that. Um, hey, in for a penny, in for a pound. So it was nice. It was it was upscale, big sports bar kind of atmosphere, uh, lots of TVs, lots of things to look at, which was kind of important because the, the waitresses were definitely something to look at, but something I was trying really hard not to look at. And it was nothing obscene. It was nothing, uh, it wasn't a strip club or anything like that. They were just dressed in a very interesting uniform. And I'll leave it at that. If you want to know more, no, don't, don't Google that. Just <laughs> anyway. It was the first time I blushed through the entire lunch in a long time. But I did, because of this, I, I had to watch TV, and most of the TVs had Olympic sports on, and I'm not a fan of the Olympics uh, for many, many reasons. But uh, just by chance, I happened, if I think it was live, I'm not sure, because, you know, they show repeats and stuff and the time difference and all that, but I got to see the uh, the Australian breakdancing competition, which uh, I just... I didn't at the time realize how ridiculous that was. I just thought the whole thing was ridiculous. And don't get me wrong, it is. But that was that was something, I guess it was intended to make the rest of it look less ridiculous. I don't know. Anyway, so that was Friday afternoon. I get back to the show, and now we're going to talk pipe show uh, from here on out, I promise. Uh, Three o'clock, the smoking competition. So I spent some time chatting with, uh, with lots of folks there, uh, I'm gonna. I'll go through a list of everybody that I talked to. Uh, but I know uh, David St. David was there uh, at some point. Greg Tunnel showed up. Uh, Beans three sixteen, uh, Big Country Briar. Uh, so Brian and Cole were both there. I hadn't yet seen WKR Piper in Cincinnati. Odi, I saw him later. And uh, Lefty sixty eight, uh, who's friends with those guys. Yeah, his name's Steve. He w he was there. Uh, so talked to them for a bit. Terry Carpenter, uh, was a great guy, uh, showed up, and I believe that's when I also met Walt Hettinger, and Walt's a pipe maker that I've followed for a long time on the Pipe Makers Forum. I've learned a lot from, from him, but never got to meet him, so that was kind of neat, and we actually sat next to one another at table and smoked pipes and talked about pipes, and he was showing me some of the stuff he was doing in his shop. He had one of them iPad thingies where you can flip through pictures, and you're like, oh, look at that. Uh... No, they're really good quality pictures. I mean, it was it was kind of fascinating. 
It was like I was standing in a shop looking at the, the tools. And that might be more testament to his photography. But yeah, so we, you know, we smoked pipes and talked, uh, talked about all sorts of things. And, and that was a great time. And then the smoking competition started. So this was a new experience for me. I've never been in a smoking competition. And I was really excited to try it. So the rules, there's like a 10 page printout of rules and uh, it, it's amazing. I talked more about this on the Friday night live stream if you wanna hear more about the rules, but I didn't bring home a copy unfortunately. But I think they're standardized rules by the Society of Pipe Smokers or the, the International Society of Pipe Smokers, something like that. So if you just Google slow smoke competition rules, you'll find a copy of them. Uh, so everybody has to have the same pipe, and in this case, that pipe is a Missouri Meerschaum Country Gentleman. So we were all giving, given a brand spanking new Country Gentleman, and it is engraved for the show, for this competition. And it says the first Midwest Regional Slow Smoke Columbus, Ohio 2024. That's kind of cool that I was in the first ever Midwest Regional competition. Probably not going to be able to read that, but... And it's a nice country gentleman. Uh, we were also given a tamper, which is, I believe, just a poplar dowel. Um, and, you know, it, it's an adequate tamper for that pipe. Uh, gets all the way to the bottom. We were given three ounces of tobacco, which was unfortunately not a very good blend for my palate. It was uh, last year's show blend, which is a Balkan. Very, very much Latakia forward in my opinion, but remember, Latakia is like death to me. Um, you had three minutes to put the tobacco into your pipe, and if you, whatever wasn't in at the end of three minutes had to go away, so that you couldn't add anything to the pipe once it was lit. And then we had, now normally you get two matches in one minute to light your pipe, and you have to use those matches within that one minute. Because we were outdoors and it was windy, they amended the rules to say you could use as many matches as you needed and you had three minutes to get the pipe lit. And so that's what we did. And uh, unfortunately, my buddy Greg Tunnel uh, just couldn't get his pipe lit. He's not used to using matches and it was, it was bad conditions. I mean, it really was. This was bound to happen to somebody. So he only lasted a couple seconds <laughs> before he was out. And... Uh, but he, he got a prize, and you could you could see Greg's video on that. Uh, uh, yeah, he is a good sport about it, and uh, it, you know it was really nice. It was really a nice experience because everybody was was a good sport about it, you know, and, and everybody, the guys that went out early, they, you know, they, they, it was just as much camaraderie as the guys that lasted until the end. Um, I astonishingly and for reasons I do not understand wound up coming in third place I never would have guessed that I thought I would have been in Greg's position because you see how many times I relight on these, these things but of course I wasn't talking so that was part of my strategy I didn't talk somebody asked me on Friday if I had a strategy and I said nah <laughs> you know I just I yeah, smoked the pipe as slow as I can I did try counting and stuff like that but it just it was too it was too unnatural for me. It just I just kind of slowed down and didn't talk. So I think I got the time written down somewhere, but I, I didn't pull it pull it out. I, I think I did like thirty seven minutes and fifteen seconds or something like that. And the next guy out was like maybe thirty seven minutes and forty five seconds or maybe 38 minutes, I, I don't know. It, it, was, it was not a lot of time after me that, that he went out. He was second place, and the winner continued on for another minute, a minute and a half. So his time was like 39 minutes and a couple seconds. So I'm really pretty happy with how I did. I, I think I did, uh, did quite well. I don't know why. Maybe it was because it was a Balkan and I thought it tasted horrible, <laughs> so I just didn't want to smoke it. I don't know. But it was a lot of fun. And and the great thing about it is the guys that were at the table, I didn't know them all, but I got to know some of them better. And, like, you know, people would come up, up to me and as I was walking around the show saying, hey, you did pretty good, and, you know, so you did good too. You know, it was just a nice kind of icebreaker thing. So have a, get into a slow smoke competition. It's fun.
you, you'll have a great time. The prize for that was <laughs> a tin of last year's show blend, which I already have a tin of actually, so this is my second tin of last year's show blend uh, that will go into my cellar. Uh, I'm laughing because this was the, the, the blend that we had to smoke. <laughs> so, and we'll get into tobaccos now. And every year I'm, I'm, I'm well, I've started to every year buy a tin of the blend of the year for, from the show. This is the 2024 blend. And this blend is also a Balkan. Uh, a lot of Kia forward blend with mix with red Virginias and Turkish leaf, a small amount of Perique and Burley to complete the blend. So, yeah. But it supports the show and who knows, maybe I'll get my taste for Latakia back someday. Uh, other tobacco. So I bought some tobacco and I was given uh, some tobacco. So let me, let me do the given first. So this is from my buddy Ethan, Parsimonious Piper. Uh, he's been playing with blends. He's trying to find, oddly enough for me, he's trying to find the perfect cherry blend. And that's what this is. So he wants a blend that smells enough like cherry in the room note that his wife is happy, but doesn't taste like cherry. So this is a dark fired Kentucky cherry blend. And I had one bowl of it at the show and it was, it was nice. Um, and I did not detect cherry. So I have to wait until my wife gets back and we'll do some room note t t uh, testing and that sort of thing. But, uh, thank you, Ethan. I'm really looking forward to giving this a try and I'm going to give you, give you feedback on it. So, that was that, uh, and now before we get on to tobaccos, I bought I got one more thing to show you here, which is had a stop by Larry Blackett's uh, shop. Larry and Rose were there, and Larry was in great spirits as always, and it was great talking with him and catching up. And I bought this tamper, which I think is just cool. If you can't make that out, that is an Egyptian sarcophagus. Incredible detail on this. It really is amazing how 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 well these things turn out when Larry casts them. Um, I call this the Pharaoh. Uh, Larry said some bonehead named it uh, Valley of the Kings. It's it's not a valley. It's it's one one king. So many things you could have called this. Valley of the King? I'm sorry, Eric. Uh, I said, what, what do you call this one? And he, 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 he thought for many, he turned to Rose, and she was thinking, he said, oh, Valley of the Kings. I said, Valley of the Kings? Yeah, it was Eric's idea. <laughs> we had fun. Uh, and it was great catching up with Larry. He, he's a wonderful guy. And... Uh, if you don't have any of Larry's tampers, they're beautiful pewter tampers. He's got a huge variety. He had several new ones at the show this year. Uh, I believe that's one of the new ones. And uh, they're just beautiful. I do not need another tamper. I really don't. I don't even need this because I got this. <laughs> but I buy them because they're just beautiful. Ah, tobacco. So I bought some stuff. Uh, this was an interesting interaction. Well, let me go through these first. So, I bought a tin of Cabby's Mixture from 2016. I love Cabby's Mixture. Uh, the Dorm Duke, thank you, my friend, uh, turned me on to this blend. It's incredible. Um, and I, you know, from seven, I haven't had uh, any with that much age on it from 2016. Uh, sealed with. I don't know, crayon or something? And and that looks nice, I guess, but it really doesn't do it. You can see all the gaps in that. It's a, kind of a, not a good way to seal it. So I will take that off and probably put that uh, hockey tape on it. Those square and rectangular tins are the, the biggest worries. Uh, I got two tins of Solani Age Burley Flake just because they were there and I like it. And this was an interesting one. So... There's a guy with a ton of this that he was selling. And I've heard good things about it. I'm not a Virginia guy, but it's a Virginia Perique. And I thought, well, 
it's a chance to give it a try and it was a pretty good price I think he I think the thing was these were ten dollars each and if you bought then he had other tobaccos and if you bought a, two tins you got them for fifteen dollars so buy one of these get another tin for five dollars that was the way it was so he also had uh, some of uh, Cornell and Deal's The Beast, uh, which I have not had, although my friend uh, Eddie, Texas Piper, sent me some of this. I haven't opened it yet. So now i got two tins of this. And, you know, so I put these two together. I said, you know, I like to get these, and I handed him a 20, and he handed me back a 10, and I said, no, no, I gave you a... And he said, yeah, I know. I said, well, he said, just don't ask questions. <laughs> So I, I didn't ask questions and I spent, I got those for $5 each. Uh, so yeah, that's it. That That's the tobacco. So I think I've, I think I've covered all the high points in terms of me getting stuff. Um, so that was Friday and then I made notes, which I can't read. I made notes because there were just so many people that I wanted to mention, and I will do that in a moment. Uh, so that was pretty much Friday. Oh, Friday night I had dinner with Greg Falk. Uh, Greg is a, a, a viewer, uh, known Greg for a long time through comments and things like that. Uh, met Greg. I think this is the third time I've seen him at the Columbus show. Wonderful man. I, I really like spending time with Greg, and, and we had uh, we had dinner at the bar together. And, and thank you, Greg. It was a very very good evening and very very kind of you. Um, and saw him a lot during the during the rest of the time, and, and always enjoy his company. Uh, told you about that. Yep. So Saturday. So Saturday. Uh, got up in the morning. Decided I'm not going to deal with the, uh, not going to deal with the, sorry, I'm just getting caught up on the notes so I don't have to keep these on. The hotel breakfast, went out to Bob Evans, had a wonderful breakfast, came back, uh, spent most of the day sitting out back smoking pipes, occasionally walking through the pipe show, going back out to the patio smoking pipes, just meeting people, talking to people, just having a wonderful time on Saturday. Uh, on Saturday night, a group of us went to Schmidt's restaurant in in the German village. It's an authentic German restaurant. Re really nice place. Been this is the third time I think I've been there. Good good food. Uh, and was there with uh, it was Ethan Par Parsimonious Piper, uh, Saint David, Greg Tunnel, and then four folks that I met at the show that are viewers. Uh, one was Steve and his wife Glenna, and it was really nice getting to know them a bit and chatting with them. And the other was Eddie and his son DJ, and it was good meeting you guys and, and getting to know you a bit better. So re really enjoyed that. Uh, had a great dinner, went back back to the patio, more pipe smoking. Uh, met a man named John, who I, I wish I got his last name and I wish I had more time to spend with him. He was... Uh, he was in one of those uh, mobility scooter type things that, that people ride around. Uh, but man, he was a fascinating guy and I really enjoyed talking to him. And uh, oh, there's just so, so many other people. Uh, so let me just kind of go down the list here and, and, and mention some folks. Because, and I'm going to leave people out, so I probably shouldn't even try this. But I already told you about Eddie and DJ and Steve and Glenna. It was great meeting you guys. Greg Folk. Uh, St. David, Parsimonious Piper, Greg Tunnel, I've mentioned all of those, and it was great seeing them. Uh, Papa Bear, Gary, fantastic meeting you, and Smarty Bob, great to meet you in person as well. Uh, had a great time with those guys. Uh, Tracy, Ryan, I, I hadn't met them before. Ryan, I'm sorry, I can't, I'm not remembering the name of your channel, darn it, but I, I subscribe to it, and I will mention it uh, at, at some point. Uh, simply Pipes, or Pipes and... Types and hobbies or something. Uh, don't look up any of those. Ryan's a great guy. Uh, already talked about meeting, uh, seeing Beans, uh, another, uh, well, Brian rhymes with Ryan, and he's a great guy too. Uh, Cole, Big Country, Briar, Odie, Lefty, uh, Andre Tessier, I, good good guy, good friend. I really like uh, like chatting with Andre, and he, he ran the pipe smoking contest, so good job with that, Andre. His buddy, T. Greg, 
Terry Carpenter and his wife. Uh, I mentioned that I met Walt Hettinger, uh, which was, was really neat. Uh, my buddy Adam that I know, uh, I think through Facebook and Instagram, but uh, it was great to meet you in person, Adam. Uh, Larry Blackett and Rose, and also uh, Tim West uh, was there, and I got to chat with him for a bit. So yeah, lots of people. Those are the ones I could remember off the top of my head this morning before I made this video. I'm sure there are many others, and I apologize if I did not mention you. But uh, I wanted to mention the folks that I could remember and give you an idea of just how many people are at these things. And there is not, you know, the first one I went to, I remember walking out into that courtyard thinking, oh, God, how am I going to even talk to anybody? And now I cannot, this is the third year I've gone, I cannot walk a few steps in the show without bumping into somebody I know and, or somebody that says hello to me because they know me from YouTube. Uh, wonderful, wonderful group, wonderful experience. So, in summary, if you haven't been to a pipe show, go to a darn pipe show. Uh, I know we're running long, but I want to give you some updates on other stuff. Uh, my car uh, needs a new engine. I don't know. 14-year-old car, 120,000 miles. But if I put a new engine in and it lasts another year, that's a year's worth of car payments, which would cost more than the engine. I think I'm going to do it because I love the car. I know it's probably foolish, but that's the update there. Uh, wife is still in Pittsburgh with her dad. Her dad is he, he's basically uh, coming to the end. Uh, is 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 what's happening, and it's hard for her. It's very hard for her. She's fighting it. She's she's you know trying to blame the medication and things like that and all. And it's it's understandable, but the truth is he's just. He's just winding down now. So keep praying your prayers. Uh, he's a good man, and uh, he's, he's, he's about to make uh, make that crossing over and, and uh, go to salvation. So uh, God bless him. And uh, please keep my wife, Elisa, in prayer because she's, she's going through a really rough time with this. My brother Scott is getting stronger. They still don't know what's going on with this mass. It's not cancer. They keep doing biopsies, but he's getting stronger and doing much better. And uh, so the prayers there are working. So please keep them up as well. And that's about it. What do I got on the books for today? Uh, you know, I'm going to kind of take it easy. It's been it's been just a whirlwind since I got back from from Columbus, uh, just nonstop. And I just need some time to not do anything. So I'm probably not going to do anything for the rest of the day other than the things that I absolutely have to do. One of those being finishing this haunted bookshop in a basket pipe that I probably forgot to tell you about at the beginning. I hope you enjoyed this. I know it's been a long one. If you watched this far, well, Godspeed. So with that, I will be back on Friday with, with another live stream, next Sunday with another one of these. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Bye now.